Hi, thanks for watching. Okay, so in this video, I would like to try to analyze the Trump rally shooting from July 13th, uh, 2024. If you uh, wanna really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. And in this video, basically, I'd, I'd like to first kind of break down the logistics of exactly how the shooting took place, kind of look at um, how the Secret Service maybe blundered or maybe uh, failed to react in a timely manner to, to the shooting. And then finally, to sort of analyze maybe why this actually happened and maybe, you know, leaving aside what happened on the shooter side, what sort of problems occurred at the administrative level, both from the Department of Homeland Security and also at the level of Secret Service that could have contributed to something that really should never have happened. Okay, so now let's start with something really obvious. Okay, before we get into all the deep analysis, let's let's look at something that's very clear. Okay, before the shooting, before the actual shooting, just seconds before the shooting, okay, one of the teams of counter snipers, okay, on those buildings behind Trump, right? Okay, one of those teams was already like looking down their scopes and really kind of aiming their rifles. Okay. My understanding is that when counter snipers are actually like sighting and aiming and like looking through their scopes directly at a specific, specific, uh, kind of target, that's a sign that, that something is not normal. Okay. So that tells me that before the actual shots take place, okay. Something was in the headphones of those sniper, those counter snipers, OK, letting them know that something was happening. They may not have actually seen the shooter. And I'll explain because there was a tree blocking. There was a tree blocking where where Thomas Matthew Crooks was actually located. OK, but at least they were looking in that direction. And I think they may have seen his head popping up just a little bit, even through the tree. Right. It'll turn out that the other counter sniper team that was on another more distant roof, the farther roof behind Trump, okay, they're the ones that actually took the shot that actually killed the shooter, okay, that killed uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks. So what appears clear at this point is that number one, counter sniper teams from the Secret Service probably did have their eyes on that roof where, where Thomas Matthew Crooks was located, all right? And what's also clear is that they hesitated. For some reason, there was a hesitation and there was a period of about seven seconds, not 11 seconds, like it's been reported. What happened? If you actually look at the video and count the seconds, it's about seven seconds from the moment that Mr. Crooks started firing, you know, at the crowd, first at Trump and then at the crowd, and the time at which one of the counter snipers actually killed uh, Mr. Crooks. Sources within the Secret Service tell us that the working theory right now is that the Secret Service sniper uh, did not initially shoot the gunman because the thought was it was possibly a police officer. And that's why it took several seconds uh, for the sniper to shoot the gunman. That's why the gunman was able to fire off some shots. So while the, the exact details aren't exactly clear, it does appear that the counter snipers, the counter snipers that were behind Trump, that they were aware that somebody was on the roof, that that was a suspicious person, and they probably even had visual contact with, with uh, Mr. Crooks, okay? But that there was some confusion as to who he really was on the roof. And it also appears, okay, as though Secret Service was alerted to Mr. Crooks like almost an hour before, and then even right before he got up on the roof, okay, that people on a building right next to the building where Mr. Crooks climbed up, right, that there were some like, say, law enforcement snipers that had actually seen him right before he got on the roof. Crooks started setting off alarm bells at least half an hour before the assassination attempt, when local police reported a suspicious person near the building. A local tactical sniper inside a neighboring building spotted him from a second floor window and snapped this picture. Crooks then pulled out a rangefinder and the sniper alerted his team. So it does appear that both local law enforcement and Secret Service knew that Mr. Crooks was getting close to that building and about to climb that roof right about the time that people in the public were starting to like video him getting right as he got on the roof. And the video you're looking at is just one of the new perspectives that we are getting from some of the folks who were out there. And it looks like this is actually the video that uh, shows the shooter right there. You could see him actually on the roof. And that was about two or three minutes before the actual shooting. So it was very quick. 
But the important thing is that Secret Service was probably aware that something was going on, that something suspicious was happening around that roof right around the time that those public videos were being recorded showing him getting on the roof. Okay, so in this photograph of the scene, okay, you can see a building to the left, all right? And I use blue ink to indicate more or less the position where Mr. Crooks was laying in the prone position near the top of that, of that sloped roof, okay? And you can basically see the line, like the, I use a blue, a blue highlighter to show sort of the line of his gunfire, right? And then up on the buildings behind where Mr. Trump was, uh, was giving his speech, you can see the positions where there were two groups of counter snipers, okay? And basically, um, the one that's closer to Mr. Crooks, you'll see that I put a black X, okay, because that tree that's right there between where the, the nearest counter snipers were to Mr. Crooks, okay, that tree was probably blocking their view. And I think Mr. Crooks probably put himself in that position to get the benefit of that tree, Okay, so that put the other counter snipers that were in the other building, okay, and, and I use a yellow ink to indicate the, that second group. The reason, part of, probably part of the reason why they delayed in getting turned around is because they initially had their guns pointed in the opposite direction because they were there to cover another direction, okay? Um, the other thing, maybe they did have their guns spun around by the time they knew Mr. Crooks was on the roof, but probably, again, there was that question of, they had to they had to delay because they, they weren't really sure if he was really an enemy or if he was maybe just a policeman up there doing something and there was just a miscommunication. But the bottom line is that, you know, first of all, the the nearest counter snipers probably did not have a line of sight. And as it turns out, I understand they didn't actually kill Mr. Crooks. OK, so we have to this thing got a little complicated. So actually, the counter snipers that were further away and were sort of least in position actually were the ones who had a line of sight and ended up killing him. So, you know, all these things kind of contribute to the delay. OK, I think we can all agree that Mr. Crooks should never have been allowed to get on that roof. OK, so there was already a problem just with him even getting on the roof. But even then. OK, it does appear that the counter snipers had him in sight and knew there was a problem. So now the question is, why the hesitation? OK, if Secret Service had not hesitated, he would have been shot before he even had a chance to, to even issue one one shot on the president or on the crowd. So what was the hesitation? OK, obviously, the hesitation was that their Secret Service already knew about that building, okay, but they thought the building was covered by law enforcement. Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle says police were originally supposed to be on the roof. A decision was made to move them inside because of a sloped roof. Okay, so we can see the problem, okay, and this this is this is ter this is a terrible mistake, okay, because the Secret Service understood that this building was covered, right, but it was covered from the inside, right? And so when they saw someone on top of the building, they had to assume it was maybe a police officer because even though they were told it would be covered from the inside or it was understood that it would be covered from the inside, the fact that they understood it was going to be covered by law enforcement had to give them a little moment, momentary doubt that maybe the person on the top could have possibly been associated with the police. So they would have that fear, you know, as counter snipers, if they just shot him without asking questions, they might have shot a police officer. And so that gave them that hesitation. But this is a hesitation that costs the life of at least one person in the crowd. OK, and let's let's not forget, this was not just an assassination attempt. Let's let's understand this was kind of more similar to a school shooting. OK, this guy, Mr. Crooks, he had several clips. OK, so his intention was not just to shoot uh, Donald Trump. His intention was to spray, I think, to spray the crowd and to make it a massive killing, like a like a massive school shooting or something. So let's let's not just focus on Mr. Trump. OK, the Secret Service has on their hands what could have potentially been a massive killing, OK, a massive shooting and the hesitation that actually caused one person to get killed and caused Mr. Trump to get shot in the head, you know, on, in the ear. Basically, that was because of the confusion. OK, because there was an understanding that that building would be covered by law enforcement. So when they saw someone up there, they just needed a few seconds to kind of work out whether it was maybe a policeman up there or not. That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. OK, now my first reaction is that sounds like bureaucrat speak. That's just bureaucrat gobbledygook. OK, and also it's not true. It's not honest. It's not honest because 
the the sloped roofs where the where the two counter sniper teams they were even more sloped than the roof that where Mr. Crooks was was shooting from. Okay, so this idea that it that it was a problem to be a sloped roof. Well, then why was it why was it a problem? Why wasn't it a problem to put the two counter sniper teams on sloped roofs but behind Trump? So that just doesn't make any sense. And even if it was a safety factor, what is more of a safety factor? More of a safety factor is the crowd and the the pre presidential candidate. That's even more of a safety factor. So that tells me, in my mind, that the, the management of the Secret Service and even the, the head of the Secret Service, this Kim Cheadle, they've got this kind of OSHA mindset, like, you know, safety for, the, for our officers. They've, they're starting to, to think of that bureaucratically ahead of the greater safety for the crowd. OK, and this idea, oh, we'll cover it by putting police on the inside. But they don't realize that creates an ambiguity. OK, because if somebody actually does get on top of the roof, people are going to assume that because it's covered by law enforcement, that if somebody does get on top of the roof, it must be some law enforcement, even though they're not supposed to be there. So that will cause a little hesitation. So this is an example where you get too much in the bureaucratic mindset. You get too bureaucratized in your mindset and you start focusing on things like OSHA or, you know, officer safety and you start doing weird maneuvers, you know, you could actually create a very dangerous, ambiguous situation where the people who do have a line of sight to, to shoot at somebody on the roof, they're going to hesitate because they've been told that that building has been covered by law enforcement. So it's like this cascading, you know, snowballing effect of all these, you know, problems because of one really bad and unwise decision that was based on something that was just a bunch of bullshit. Okay. Because the idea that because it's a sloped roof that, that, that this should create a safety problem, it's just bullshit in every way because it's much more of a safety problem to take care of the crowd and to fully cover that building. So this building's failure to get covered was based on this bizarre, nonsensical bureaucratic logic. And I don't think it's inappropriate, okay, to put into context, all right, just to put into context that Kimberly Cheadle works under the Secretary of Homeland Security, whose name is Alejandro Mayorkas. Law enforcement officials tell ABC News that the building where the shooter was on the roof was actually the staging area for local the local police tactical team who's watching over the crowd. I understand you can't comment, you have an independent review, but why would the Secret Service not be tasked with overseeing that building with a direct line of sight at the former president? So, uh, once again, I will not comment on, on specific um, uh, facts or asserted facts with respect to the subject of the independent investigation, um, uh, both the review and the FBI's criminal investigation. But remember something, that uh, local law enforcement with whom we work all across the country, including, for example, at national security special events such as uh, the NATO summit that concluded successfully. That is something that we do all the time. It's a very well-defined protocol and regime. Okay. Alejandro Mayorkas is one of the most bureaucratized, wonky, sort of cuck Democrat types. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, this guy, he's such a wonk. He's so bureaucratized. His brain is so full of bureaucratic logic that he doesn't know how to cut through the bullshit and think directly as a regular human being. And this is something we need to think about. You know, maybe we should think of a new category of personality disorder when somebody becomes so hyper bureaucratized in their mind that they no longer have direct personal common sense. OK, and I think we have the right to say this because even without taking sides politically, I'm not even a Republican. OK, but I think we can agree that the way Alejandro Mayorkas has handled the crisis at the border. OK, and I'm not even against immigration. I'm not like a hardcore anti-immigration, but we can still agree that the way Mr. Mayorkas has handled the crisis at the border and the way he's responded to inquiries about the crisis really shows what his brain is made of. And you can see the bureaucratized nature of his brain in the way he responds to challenges. Is there a crisis at our southern border? Senator, uh, there is a very significant- that, That's a yes or no question. There's a very significant- it, Is there a crisis? Senator, there's a very significant challenge- I think your microphone is not on. There is a very significant challenge that we are facing- Yes or no, the is there border. a crisis? I believe I've addressed that question. So Senator. you're refusing to answer? Senator, uh, there is a very significant challenge and- Will you answer if there's a crisis? 
therefore we are dedicating the resources. Okay, so you're refusing we- to answer. Okay, look, I'm no fan of Ted Cruz, believe me. Okay, but we can see that Alejandro Mayorkas is very passive aggressive, okay? And he's willing to stall a proceeding and not enter into an agreement over terminology, okay? Basically, we can all agree there's a big problem at the border, but the question is whether we're going to say it's a big challenge or whether we're going to say it's a big crisis. Okay, so he's going to get into this huge skirmish because he's not going to give even an inch on terminology. Okay, so I would call that very passive aggressive. And I think that's one of the symptoms of a hyper bureaucratized mindset because hyper bureaucratized thinking tends to diminish basic common sense. Do we need to have more or fewer people coming to our southern border? Uh, Senator, Senator, we are working on diminishing the number of people whom we encounter at our southern border because of the challenge it presents. We're trying to build lawful, safe, and orderly pathways to accomplish that. Okay, and I'm also not a big fan of Josh Hawley, okay, but we can see here again, we can see the bureaucratized, you know, how you deploy bureaucratized mindset as as like a weapon, because here Mallorcas, he's seems to say he wants to diminish context, but I think what he's saying is he wants to diminish illegal contacts at the border, okay, because then he talks about a way to get legal immigration. So it's almost like he says he wants to diminish something, but he also at the same out of the other side of the same mouth, he's saying he basically just wants to make it legal, wants to create like a legal system to get floods of people coming over the border. How many people have used the app then? That you are referring to. So if I can explain. How many people have used so, the app? So we have, um, we had a significant surge of Cuba. How many people Asian, have used the app? Nicaraguans and Venezuelans. Mr. Secretary, you're here to answer my questions. How many people have used the app? Uh, tens of thousands have sought to uh, make an appointment at the port of entry under our parole program. Okay, okay, good. How many have been admitted without an interview at the border? Uh, Well, uh, you are, uh, again, inserting a fact uh, that does not belong in your question. Okay, now here in this last clip with Josh Hawley, you can see that Alejandro Mayorkas very clearly states that they're trying to accommodate a surge in Venezuelan, Haitian, Nicaraguan, and Cuban, I think, I think he says, like these, these four groups. So it's, it's almost like he's aware of this surge coming in and it's almost like he wants to accommodate it. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, he, he won't say it directly because he's too much of a bureaucratized person and he, he doesn't want to like give off the wrong signals. Okay, so he, he wants, he, he can't say anything directly, but through his bureaucratized thinking, you can tell that he wants to accommodate surges in four huge uh, population groups of uh, people coming from Latin America. And you'll also notice in that second video uh, with Josh Hawley, the the first one with Josh Hawley, but the second video, right? Where basically Alejandro Mayorkas kind of responds with kind of a a sarcastic chuckle. More or fewer people coming to our Southern border? Uh, Senator, Senator, we are working on diminishing the number of people whom we encounter at our southern border. Okay, basically he he's not making too many efforts to conceal his hostility, his hostility towards Republicans basically. And also too, the way he will even attempt to try to present the staggering border crisis as sort of, you know, not that big of a deal. Okay, when in reality, What we're dealing with is just an obscene amount of of massive immigration coming in, massive uncontrolled immigration. And, you know, even for people like me, I believe in immigration, but to have such a staggering, obscene amount of immigration, a lot of it just kind of illegal and disorganized. I think uh, to try to pretend that that could be presented with indifference, with kind of that bureaucratic indifference, I think is sort of offensive, okay? And the fact that he can at the same time chuckle with sarcasm, that to me tells me that when you have a lot of bureaucratized mindset, when your mindset is very bureaucratized, you can get a distance from your own motives, okay? And I would not, I, I, would, I would wager to guess that Alejandro Mayorkas has a lot of resentment I think towards like, say, maybe Republicans, right? He has a lot of resentment um, in his heart. And I think also he may be a very cynical person who maybe is not, is not, doesn't have a problem with a really obscene surge of immigration. And he's willing to sort of manage it and handle it with this bureaucratized anesthesia. So the, the bureaucratized mindset is sort of like an anesthesia. So he doesn't actually have to feel how obscene it is. You know what I mean? Was the local law enforcement in direct communication in real time with the Secret Service or was there some sort of breakdown there? Again, I'm, I'm 
I'm not in a position to speak of particular facts of what did and did not occur on Saturday. Now, I realize that Mr. Mayorkas probably really cannot go into many details. That probably is true. But in light of everything we've seen with the way he handles himself, let's say in, in Senate uh, inquiries, you know, about the border crisis, I do perceive just a little bit of duper's delight at him not being able to give people what they want and being able to sort of entitle himself to, like, say, hold on to the truth and not necessarily tell people and level with people. It's like he sort of enjoys the bureaucratic smokescreen, if you want to call it that, you know. So um, at this point, I want to talk about how that could actually affect, uh, like, say, something like the shooting, like the, the Trump rally shooting, right? Because through the same bureaucratic smokescreen, right, you start to, like, overemphasize the minutia of wonky political correctness, like, oh, we want to make sure that, you know, we don't endanger our officers. And that would be like an OSHA violation to have somebody on a sloped roof. So let's do something really creative and wonky and let's have it covered from the inside, you know, and oh, and so that's so now we've we've crossed that box and and we've checked that box and now we don't have to worry about it. It's like they substitute common sense with a bunch of wonky bureaucratic nonsense. OK, and so I do think it's important and I think it's a very important psychologically that, you know, while some bureaucratized thinking probably is important, we don't want to be too, we don't want to be too cut through the bullshit, right? Because then we're all just going to be getting in bar fights and getting in road rage, right? There has to be some level of bureaucratic buffer in our brains. But when we become hyper bureaucratized, okay, you can almost ask the question whether you become, I'm going to say this hyper social, okay? And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that I think we can identify sort of what we might call the bureaucratized beehive. You know, it's like a part of the brain, right? It's like the bureaucratized beehive of social authority and social compliance, right? I'll call it the bureaucratized beehive, right? But it is associated with authority, okay? And one of the best movies that I've ever seen, coming from one of the best books I've ever read about social authority and the bureaucratized beehive, is one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> now, this scene is very important, okay, because this is a drama. This is like a dramatization. But similarly, the encounter with Ted Cruz was also a dramatization because Ted Cruz himself, he's not that direct in real life, okay? He was. Ted Cruz was also dramatizing, but where Ted Cruz was sort of like uh, confronting dramatically Alejandro Mayorkas, Ted Cruz was kind of like, hey, I'm Mr. Cut the Bullshit, and now you be Cut the Bullshit with me. And he knew that Alejandro Mayorkas is too much of a beehive bure bureaucratized brain that he could never actually cut through the bullshit and level with anybody, right? So Ted Cruz was setting up this dramatic contrast of somebody who just wants to cut through the bullshit versus somebody who's hyper bureaucratized. Likewise here, in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, okay, Nurse Ratchet represents a hyper bureaucratized person, right? Who is part of the beehive of social authority, which is the mental institution, right? It's and the mental institution is, is sort of like a metaphor, right? For for big government or for like say the big bu bureaucracy, right? Okay. And so then in the contrast, just like Ted Cruz and a dramatic contrast, all the people inside the insane asylum, you know, led by Mr. McMurphy, who's Jack Nicholson, right? They, they had a party overnight where they were like getting drunk and taking all the drugs and stuff and basically just, just going wild. And this guy named Billy Bibbit, who had a stutter, who had a very bad stutter, he was allowed to sleep with a really attractive woman and it took away his stutter. Okay, so this is an amazing dramatic situation where... Um, they show the contrast of where you become so bureaucratized, it's like a kind of insanity, okay? And then in a way, when you like cut through all the bullshit and you get all that bureaucratic garbage out of your brain, you just cut through the bullshit and get real, you could actually maybe even cure like some mental illness, right? And so Billy Bibbit comes out of the situation where he was like getting drunk and sleeping with this girl, okay? But basically he's cured of his mental disorder. So it's kind of this bizarre thing. Now we all know in common sense, you don't want to be too direct in life. And we also know in, in life, you want to have some bureaucratic thinking, okay? So we understand this is just a dramatic metaphor, but it basically is, is this, it's this climax, okay, where you see like the naked extreme of hyper bureaucratization, okay, against somebody who's at the extreme of being direct and how that actually worked to actually cure them of a disorder. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm, I can explain everything. Please do. Explain everything. Er, er, everything? <laughs> Aren't you ashamed? No, I'm not. All right. You know, Billy, what worries me is how your mother is going to take this. Um, um, well, you, you, you don't, don't have to t t t tell her, Miss Ratchet. I don't have to tell her. Your mother and I are old friends, you know that. Um, please don't, don't, don't tell my don't you my, think you should mother. have thought of that before you took that woman in that room? No, no. I, 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 I didn't. Now, again, this is a drama, okay? So let's not be too literal with this. Let's be mature about this. This is a dramatization, okay? Real life is not that black and white, but it is a dramatization to show us that the extreme of bureaucratized thinking and the getting too, too dominated by the bureaucratized beehive, that can have a way of crushing people and it can also be a form of mental illness, okay? That's, that's the point I'm making. So you know, it can also be mental illness to be too direct all the time, because all you're going to do is get in bar fights and get in road, road rage incidents, right? So yeah, there has to be a balance. But as I analyze the Trump rally shooting, my first concern is whether under the leadership of Alejandro Mayorkas, and then also, you know, with Kimberly Cheadle, right? If maybe under Alejandro Mayorkas, having a leader that is so hyper bureaucratized as a person, and then maybe Kim Cheadle, when I listen to her talk, she looks like a she looks to me like a like an executive from Wendy's being interviewed about an E. coli incident with a hamburger where she has to be really careful without, you know, what I don't see from either Alejandro Mayorkas or from Kim Cheadle. I don't see them honestly feeling anything bad about what happened. They seem so comfortable and anesthetized in their bureaucratic cloud of bureaucratic beehive thinking. So it's like they've lost touch with the common sense ground level personal feeling about what happened, right? And so my concern is that they're so heavily bureaucratized in the way they think that in a way they have a mental illness where they are not, they're too detached from common sense. In other words, on paper, according to their bureaucratized logic, they covered adequately that one building, you know, that had a line of sight to Donald Trump, right? In their bureaucratized logic. But in common sense, it was glaringly obvious that you could not leave that rooftop uh, unprotected. Okay. So no matter what they produce, no matter what kind of explanation they give us in their bureaucratized language, we know in common sense, they've gone too far into bureaucracy and that they've just lost it. And there's no way they can rescue themselves in the mode of bureaucratized thinking, right? That you have to get out of the bureaucracy and have common sense thinking to even, uh, even notice how, how poor judgment, uh, how badly into poor judgment they've departed. Right. So basically, you know, I use that clip from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest just as, as a dramatic example of how, you know, there has to be a balance. OK, and if I had to wager for now, you know, why I think, uh, you know, the shooting occurred now, of course, we have a crazy young kid, uh, the crazy young kid. He's part of it, too. But if from the government side, you know, their job is to prevent that sort of thing. You know, if I had to diagnose what really caused this, I would say there's too much bureau bureaucratic thinking that, you know, the leadership of the Department of Home Homeland Security is too much dominated by the beehive of bureaucratic thinking. Basically, it's just it's the, the bureaucratic beehive of social authority. They're too they're too dominated by the bureaucratic thinking and they've lost touch with basic common sense. That that, that would be my basic uh, analysis. And I do think that is, in a way, kind of a feminine or cuck quality. OK, I'm sorry to say it. You know, and I say that, look, I was a math major in college. I was a math and philosophy major. OK, I'm a cuck, too. I'm, I'm a low testosterone. I'm a dork. 
But the difference is, is I don't worship that way of thinking, right? My fear is that the Democrats, they kind of worship the cuck mindset. They worship that kind of dweeby, wonky kind of bureaucratic mindset. They think that's a high altar thing to put to put up on a high, high exalted uh, value, right? In my case, I, I suffer from that quality. I'm also a wuss. I'm also a dork, you know, as a person, but I don't worship that, right? I also have some respect for direct cut the bullshit thinking. So a balance, right? I, I don't want to go all the way to be like Ted Cruz, but there has to be something in the middle where you can still see common sense, right? And my my fear is that under Alejandro Mayorkas and, and Kimberly Cheadle, they just are too much dominated by that um, that kind of bureaucratic way of thinking, right? And so that can cause danger because you're going to end up making things, make it, you're going to end up making decisions that make sense on paper according to bureaucratic logic, but in reality, they're very dangerous. That's pretty much my, uh, my summary, and I appreciate your patience, and uh, thanks for watching.